Hi there, it's Ruth Deering. Thank you so much for joining me today. If you have children who are anywhere between the ages of 5 and 12 years old, then this is something that you're really going to want to listen to. There's a lot of benefit in this for you. Uh, so this is really all about the perfect solution to keep your children safe and balanced online. Just to explain uh, who I am, my name is Ruth Deering. My brand is Peaceful Digital Parenting and the business is Children and Technology. So if you see those things uh, through the slides, that's what they are. I'm a mum, I have two children of my own, currently uh, just turned nine and soon to be turning six years old, uh, two beautiful boys, and I'm very, very passionate about keeping them and also keeping your children safe and healthy and balanced online. And we'll go into that uh, as we go through uh, this presentation. So we're gonna get straight into it. There's a lot to cover today. What this is all about, now my promise to you is that I can show you a way to guide your children safely through technology with confidence and I can alleviate your fears about what they're getting up to online. Now I bolded the word there alleviate because to put this all in perspective, this is about alleviating as opposed to eliminating your fears. Now when your children are online, things are going to happen. They are likely to see inappropriate content online at some point if they haven't already. They are likely to be approached by strangers that you don't particularly want them talking to. Uh, so we can't really stop that from happening, but what we can do is teach our children what to do when it, when it does happen. So this is about teaching our children to be resilient and explaining to them, showing them what they need to do so that they can be safe online, so that if these things happen to them that are not ideal, but that we're not going to be able to avoid, at least they can handle them in the best way possible. So that means that they can enjoy the benefits of technology without suffering from the pitfalls. So that's what this is all about. What it's about is we want to transform where you are now, take you from where you are now to where you want to be. So if you're like most parents with kids around this age, then there's a little bit of fear there. You may be scared about what your children are actually getting up to online and that they might get themselves in trouble. And of course that happens all the time. We want to take you from having that fear to giving you peace of mind that your children can guide themselves safely when, when they're online. We want to get you from feeling overwhelmed, and I mean, who isn't overwhelmed by technology these days? There's a lot of reason to be overwhelmed. So we want to take you from that feeling to feeling a lot more in control, and the reason that you feel in control is because you, because you have the knowledge and the confidence that you need to guide your children safely. We want to get you from losing your children to technology, and that, that's where, you know, if your children are... You know, they, they seem to constantly have their head buried in a screen of some sort uh, and there can easily be walls built around them because uh, being looking at a screen seems to be all they want to do 24-7 if, if they're allowed to. So it's from taking your children from that or losing that relationship and bond that you have with your children to gaining a much stronger personal connection. So that's what we're all about. That's where we're going from uh, and that's where I can take you to. So today we're going to cover where to find the information that you need, why it is that you need to learn this now and not later, the impact of communication. We're going to go through seven key problems that we need to deal with and the three common mistakes that most parents make so that you don't make those mistakes yourself. And there's an opportunity for more help. So there is a lot that I can do to, uh, to help you with those transformations that we, we just talked about. But there's only so much that I can do in, in an hour or an hour and a little bit. So I'm, I'm, unfortunately, I'm not a miracle worker, but I can help you. And so hopefully with your permission, uh, at the end, we can go through. I'll help you as much as I can through this. And then there's an opportunity for even more help if you're interested in the end. So hopefully that's okay. Just to explain a little bit about my story of who I am and where I'm coming from and, and why this is all happening. So I'm a mum, uh, like you, if you're a mum or a dad. Um, I'm kind of busy, so I, I don't know many parents that aren't busy. I, I juggle a busy lifestyle, so I spend a lot of time studying. I do uh, paid work and unpaid work. I ferry my children around to you know school and their, all their extracurricular activities. Uh, I try to exercise, try to keep fit, I actually train in karate uh, two or three times a week. I try and see my husband every now and then when, when that's possible. So I'm sort of being a super mum as, as we all are trying to... Uh, trying to balance life and get everything done that we need to do. I have open and honest relationships with my with my children and that's really, really important. That's a key to all this is how to get those open and honest relationships, which uh, I'm lucky enough to have now. Uh, my boys are both, they're really happy boys. They're healthy and they're well balanced. When I say well balanced, what I mean is that they are allowed to use technology. I certainly don't uh, hide it from them. Um, they, they play on games online. Uh, but they use technology safely and appropriately, so it's, it's all in moderation. They're not obsessed. 
um, they don't have issues for now at least. Uh, when things happen, I'll, I'll be in a position where I do know how to help them through it. Um, so everything is pretty good right now, but let me tell you that it wasn't always like this. So uh, how I got involved uh, in this. So picture this. This is not a, a true picture of my son. I didn't want to put my son there for um, just for, to protect his privacy. Um, but my son became obsessed with online games. And what happened was when he started, he started actually changed schools in uh, year one. So he was six years old. His best friend at that school had a little bit of a thing or a, a lot of a thing, I should say, for Pokemon. And this is well before Pokemon Go, nothing to do with Pokemon Go, just the plain original Pokemon game. Um, my son was introduced to that game by his friend at, while he was at school. And very, very quickly he became completely obsessed with it. So if, if you know anything about Pokemon, you may have kids that are into Pokemon or maybe they're into Minecraft or, or who knows what other games there are out there. There's an awful lot of them, of course. Uh, with Pokemon, it's quite a complex game. So there's a lot of different characters. There's a lot of sort of different language to it. Uh, I think what actually attracted my son to it was the fact that there was so much to it. It stimulated his brain uh, quite a lot. There were lots of levels to get through and, and um, it was really quite interesting for him. So my son became obsessed. And when I say he became obsessed with Pokemon, it just took over. It, do it dominated his mind, basically, all of his thoughts. So in his ideal world, he would be involved somehow in Pokemon 24-7. And it may be that he would... Uh, watch it on TV, he would play it on a device, whether an iPad or a DS that he has. Uh, he would be reading books about it. Even if he wasn't playing it on a device, he would be playing Pokemon games with his friends or when he was on his own. He would just be constantly, it would just be in his head and he would be imagining role-playing games in his head. He was completely obsessed <laughs> with the game of Pokemon. You may have experienced something like it with your children, hopefully not. Um, so while this happened, as I said, I was really, really busy. I'm doing my own thing and trying to juggle life as you do as a mum. And what was happening was that I was constantly being ignored by my son. So whether he was uh, hearing me and ignoring me or just not hearing me was a little bit hard to tell. But either way, the effect was that I would say things to him and he would just ignore them. And I'd have to say the same things again and again and again. And there was definitely a wall in between us and I wasn't getting through. So I'm not sure about you, but I don't really enjoy being ignored by my children. It doesn't tend to go down too well. So I turned into this sort of angry dictator. I turned into this mum and, and I didn't like the way I was sounding. I knew how I was sounding. So what happened was it was so difficult to get through to my son when he was these, these games were going through his head that it became too hard to try and, and hold a meaningful conversation with him. So the conversations that we worked on or pretty much all I was saying to him was what he needed to do. So I would be saying to him, you know, have you done your homework? And, uh, and then in ignoring it, I'd go, you know, have you done your homework? And then it would be, why haven't you done your homework? I've told you to do your homework. Why do I have to ask you to do your homework five times? You know, <laughs> so I'd become this dictator that was, you know, the, the quality of communication between us was really not good at all. It was really not positive. Um, and it upset me. I could hear the way I sounded. And I didn't like that this, this person that I'd become. Um, and I'm pretty sure it was unpleasant for everyone. It was unpleasant for me. Of course, it was unpleasant for my son uh, and for anyone else who was listening to it. It really wasn't, wasn't much fun. It wasn't a great situation to be in. My son was out of control. It, not only was he obsessed with the game, but when it was time to take uh, to, to make him stop playing those games, so it was time to you know turn the DS off or turn the iPad off uh, or stop playing on the computer. Uh, either way, he would get very, very angry. He would become my, my otherwise nicely well-behaved child, uh, would just turn into this devil, basically, uh, and he would be shaking. He would be angry, really, really angry. He would sometimes get violent. Um, he would just obviously not want to turn the games off, and it was a real drama getting him to turn the games off. It was just extremely unpleasant experience. If you've been through this, then you know what I'm talking about. If you haven't been through it, then I, I hope you don't need to. So everyone was being ignored. It wasn't just, it, this wasn't about me. He was ignoring everyone. So when, you know, we'd have, say, your grandparents would come around, uh, he would ignore them as well. And that came across as really, really rude. I was very, very aware of that. Uh, and that just made the whole situation worse. And it was also when he'd get to school. So I'd walk with him to school and he'd arrive and people would say hello to him and he would just ignore them. And it wasn't that he was trying to be rude. It wasn't that he even meant to ignore them. But the, this game, this self this talk of Pokemon stuff was was so in his head that again he just didn't hear people and he disregarded them and that was a that was a really awful thing that then affected his social circle uh, and so his friends that you know the amount of friends that he hung around became smaller and smaller 
because he, he could only really relate to other kids who were also pretty much as, as obsessed as he was with Pokemon. So that was really, uh, really not a good thing as well. So because all this happened in it really quickly, so he became obsessed with this game in no time and it wasn't while I was there. This all happened while he was at school. So I tend to, you know, pride myself. I think I'm a, I'm a pretty good mum. I do everything I can and I, you know, I adore my kids to bits. I would do anything for them. But when this happened, I was feeling pretty inadequate as a mum. So I'd been able to handle most things in parenting up until then. Um, I think parenting, I mean, we know parenting has got to be the hardest job in the world, right? Um, and it always was, but I think it's got harder with, with the digital technology that we have these days. So I was feeling really inadequate and completely overwhelmed. I just did not know what to do. I didn't know how to get my son back. Uh, I just was, just was at a complete loss. I didn't understand Pokemon uh, and I just really didn't know what to do. It came to a point and of, often I think as human beings, we tend to have to be in a, a huge level, amount of pain before we're motivated to do something about it. And let me explain how I got to that point. So I was walking to school. I'm very lucky that I'm able to walk to school uh, with my kids. So I'm walking to school this one day with my son and uh, we're on this walk and for whatever reason I just I just particularly wanted to have a, a conversation with him that day. I just really wanted to bond with him and I wanted to you know ask him lots of questions and, and have a conversation on the way to school. So I started a few conversations or I tried to start a few conversations but each time I was just ignored and he was talking to himself and you know he was <laughs> I don't know about the sound effects but basically he was walking down the street going psh, 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 you know Pikachu I choose you and da, 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 and all, all these sound effects that were going on in his head as he replayed the games and I just couldn't get through to him and so after I tried a few times and you know to no avail he, he was just completely ignoring me I pretty much lost it at that point uh, I just yelled I just absolutely yelled at him at the top of my voice in the middle of the street uh, because I just completely lost it at this point. <laughs> I was, I just didn't know what else to do, and so emotion took over. Uh, so I had my little yell and scream, and, and you know, here's this psycho woman on the street yelling at, at her son. I'm not even sure what he did, to be honest, uh, at that point. Um, but I was a little bit in my own space, I guess, then. And so what happened after I completely lost it with him was, you know, as an emotional being that I am, of course, when you get really angry to that point, the next step is just to burst into tears. So here I am on the street. Now there's this psycho woman who's just screamed her head off and is now uh, a complete mess, bawling her eyes out um, and, you know, not quite sure what to do. And at that point, I was just, I realized that, you know, I was so angry with my son for not, you know, the fact that I couldn't get through to him. But really it was more of a sadness that, that I couldn't get through to my son. And beneath that, I guess I was scared so what was beneath the, the hurt, the anger and the sadness was the fear because I was scared that I didn't know how to get my son back. And at this point, my son was six years old. I mean, you don't have children at six years old to not be able to relate with them. Um, and I just didn't know what to do. So I, I got to that point where uh, I was just I was just scared. I didn't know what to do and, and I'd hit rock bottom. So because I got to that point, I guess at that point I sort of woke up. Something inside of me just clicked. And I realized that, you know what, I had to stop being the victim. I had to stop complaining to anyone who would listen about what was going on because that really wasn't working. It wasn't really very effective. It was probably very boring to whoever was listening to it as well. And I realized that, you know, if nothing changes, nothing changes. And my son was six. Nothing was going to change from his perspective. So if I wanted the situation to change, then I was responsible for changing and I had to do something. So it was time for me to take control and I had no time to lose our kids grow up so quickly, of course, you know, like in no time and they're suddenly they're not babies anymore, they're toddlers and then suddenly they're at school already and you know how fast they grow. So I wasn't willing to waste any more time getting on top of this situation. So I had what I call a paradigm shift. So, you know, a paradigm shift is where you look at the same situation, but you look at it from a whole new perspective. And the way I had been looking at it was from a, a, a standpoint, I guess, a position of anger. So I've been angry with my son for not listening to me, for ignoring me, for getting, for being so obsessed with his game. I was angry with the friend who introduced him to that game, which probably wasn't overly fair, but that was the way I was feeling. I was angry with the creators of the game because, of course, creators of these games for kids in, intend kids to get obsessed with them. It's not by accident that, that so many kids and so many people are getting obsessed and, you know, addicted to these games online. 
So I was really upset with them. And of course, that wasn't going to have any effect on them. I'm sure they couldn't care less. Um, but this anger that I was feeling wasn't helping. So, and I, I built a bit of a wall, I guess. There was this wall between myself and my, and my son. So rather than thinking, well, it was it's me against him and having this wall between us, I realized that it had to be me with him. I had to help him. I had to go around the wall and actually be on his side so that I could help him through this because he had a problem that he needed some help with. So that was a whole new perspective for me and that made a massive, massive difference. So I was determined at this point that I was going to fix the problem. No matter what it took, I was going to fix the problem. So here's what I did. I got a little bit busy now. <laughs> I got some professional help uh, because... You know, sometimes you just need to do that. I got some professional help. I looked for books on this topic, and at that point, there really weren't many books at all. I since then actually written a book, a best-selling book, uh, on the topic, and there are a few more available now. At that point, there wasn't much. Um, so I found what was there. I did what we all do, of course, when we're struggling, and I Googled it. I Googled uh, to find whatever information I could find online. And what happens, of course, on Google is that there's so much information. So I wasted a lot of time going through a lot of useless stuff and a lot of uh, repetitive stuff. But through that, I did actually find some good stuff. There is some good stuff online if you've got the time to sort through and find it all. So I did that. I found some good stuff and I implemented what I found that seemed to make sense to me. I took an interest in the game of Pokemon, which I hadn't done up to that point. Uh, and that was a really, really important thing. I meditated. I was desperate at this point. I was willing to do whatever it takes. So, you know, I thought maybe from within, maybe I have the answers and I just, you know, maybe I just need to search within to find them. And through doing all this stuff, I learned a much, much better way to communicate with my son. And I'm going to just go into a little bit of detail now on one of the key things that I did that made a real difference. And this, this was a starting point. There's that point there where I say uh, here that I took an interest in the game. And why is that so important? What had happened up until then is that, as I said, Pokemon has a language of its own. It's really quite complex. And I hadn't understood it. And I really wasn't interested, to be honest. I, I couldn't care less about, about Pokemon and what it was all about. But what I realized, I had a bit of an insight here that I want to share with you now, which was that while I was very obviously not interested in Pokemon, what I was communicating to my son was that I wasn't interested in this thing that was the most important thing in his life. Now, our kids mimic us, of course. Our kids copy us and they learn from us. So what I was communicating to my son was, you know what, I'm really not interested in this thing that interests you most of all. I'm not interested in this thing that is dominating your life. So that sort of came across, and I didn't realize it at the time, but that was coming across as, well, you know, mum doesn't really care about what I'm doing. She doesn't care about my life. And in his words, he was actually saying that I didn't respect him. Um, and so what I realized was that maybe if I actually changed that attitude, and what if I did actually get involved in the game, and I did try to understand it, and did start learning things, and I'd realize actually a lot of it, um, there must have been some subliminal messages come through to my subconscious. I did actually know more about it than I realized just from him talking about it all the time. Um, so in taking an interest and in you know asking questions about it and actually showing him that I was interested in what he was doing and what level was he up to now and how many Pokemons did he catch and which ones did he have and what, what power does that Pokemon have and all this stuff that will make no sense to you now unless you have children or unless you're into Pokemon. Once we started having these conversations, we really started to break down the barriers, break down that wall between us. And that was step one to really getting through this uh, and, and making a big difference in the situation. So that's a really, really important insight that I just wanted to share with you then because that, that alone will help you uh, a lot if you're going through a situation like the one that I was going through. So as a result of all of that, um, here we are glamorously playing at home as we do. My son spent a lot less time playing on his games as a result of, again, all the things that I was doing. When it was time to get him off those games, there was no more violence. There were no more tantrums. And it was actually surprisingly easy to get him to stop playing the games because he wanted to stop playing them and he was happy with that. There were a few steps in between that, that process, um, but that was the end result. So there was a lot less overwhelm. I was feeling a lot less overwhelmed and I was feeling a lot more in control because I knew now I had some steps and practical steps and strategies and tips that I could do that were actually working that would uh, help my son regain a healthy balance between you know being online and being offline and so I felt a lot more in control of the situation so I don't know maybe I'm a little bit of a control freak I'm not sure um, but certainly having that extra element of control calmed me and I had a lot more peace of mind and, and felt a lot less, over, less overwhelmed and so my son and I were also able to reconnect on a whole new level and we probably actually had a better relationship after this than we had uh, before this whole thing started so that was all pretty cool. 
fast forward to today, there we are doing the stuff that we do uh, in our backyard. So we have a strong emotional bond now, like with both of my sons actually, we have a really, really good relationship and that's so, so important of course, that's why you have children. Um, they Both of my sons do play games, uh, but as I said before, they play them in healthy moderation. So they were able to get the benefits out of those games. There are some benefits. When you're looking for, if you're looking for the downside in a game, you can generally find it. If you're looking in the positive, in, a, in most games, you can find something positive as well. Uh, so they're able to enjoy technology and gain the benefits without suffering from those pitfalls. My son has a lot better social skills than he had before. He has a much wider circle of friends, and that, that's a really, really important thing. And the huge win that I had, and this is, this is when I knew that we'd really fixed it. My son had a birthday, and uh, for that birthday, he had some money. And his plan was to go into a shop, which he did do, walked into a shop with that money uh, with the intention of buying a Pokemon DS game. Now I had given him permission to buy that game. He walked into the shop and looked, the game, looked at the game and I found it there. And then he walked out of that shop with his money and chose not to buy that game and to buy another toy instead. So that was pretty cool. That was like the big win. That was when I knew that, you know what, if we rewound the clock six months, there's no way no way that would have happened. There is no way he would have walked out of that shop without that, that game. So that was when we knew we, we had it sorted. And that's the point where I want to help you get to if you're going through that sort of thing as well. So I figured after going through this experience, I'm, I'm a firm believer that everything happens for a reason. Okay, Nothing happens by accident in life. Sometimes it's hard to tell that reason. Certainly at the time, you may not realize what the reason is. But there always is a reason. And so I had to work out for myself, well, why, why did we go through such a painful situation? And, and I worked that out, that I went through a, a lot of pain. We went through a you know, very, very unpleasant, awful experience. And I realized that I'm not special in that way. There's nothing special about me or my son in that way. Okay, Lots of people are going through, of course, that situation more and more all the time. So... The thought occurred to me, what if I could take what I learned, because I learned a lot through this experience, you know, to get from where we were to where we are now was, was a massive change. There was a lot of learning there. So what if I was able to collect what the information, what I learned and share what I did to get through the situation that, that we had with, with internet addiction? What if I could share that with other parents to help them get through it? And what if I could even share it before it even happened? so that you can avoid all the pain completely that I went through. If it's too late to avoid it, then at least we can minimize it and get you out of it much quicker. So I thought that might be kind of a cool thing to do. Then, of course, I realized that internet addiction is only one risk of being online. Of course, there's cyberbullying, there's inappropriate content online, the porn and violence and all that other stuff. There are you know, issues with social media, people, kids sharing things that are, are having major effects on their lives. Um, you know, sharing sharing inappropriate images and videos of themselves and all sorts of things that are going on online. So what if I, and also, sorry, monitoring, monitoring what they do is a big thing, privacy, so many issues of being online. So what if I could learn from the experts in each of those fields? What if I could learn from, you know, privacy experts and, you know, find the best products to monitor and how to, or best learnings on how to monitor what our kids are actually doing online? What if I could learn from the experts in social media I can learn as much as I can about cyberbullying. And what if I could collate through all the stuff that's online and what if I could gather the most useful information that is actually going to help that you really need to know to keep your children safe online in a way that you can get that information in the shortest possible time frame because we're all struggling for time. What if I could collate that information and deliver it, make it as simple as possible, save you time and you know, share with you what you need to know to keep your children safe online. That excited me. That whole prospect excited me, and that's what I've been doing now for a long time to get to the point where I can share that information with you. So I reckon that's a pretty good upside, and I'm pretty convinced that that's why the experience that I had happened, so that I could help you and other people get through it. So my why, why am I doing this? Because I know firsthand, I know how internet addiction is tearing families apart. Of course, it didn't just tear mine apart for a little while there. Uh, it's obviously having a massive effect on a lot of families all around the world. Millions of innocent lives are being ruined by online activities. You know, our kids, as I said, sharing inappropriate images of themselves and having no idea of the consequences of that. There are is so many lives being ruined by cyberbullying. An, an awful lot of stuff that's going on, you know, porn. <laughs> lives are being ruined by online activities, and that is very, very upsetting. 
for me and of course for, for any parent these days. Things like hacking, online predators, social media mistakes, I said porn, seeing porn and other inappropriate content, cyberbullying, sexting, all of these things are having such an effect on people and what they're, what they're leading to is in, in kids' anxiety, which follows a path. Anxiety becomes depression. Often with depression, people turn to drugs or maybe alcohol. And worst case, if they keep going down that track for long enough and they see no other way out, then uh, suicide. The reason, the ultimate reason that I'm doing this is because I believe, and in fact I know, that all of this can be avoided. Children are committing suicide. So many of them are committing suicide. And you know, even if they're not getting to that point, maybe they have suicidal thoughts. Uh, their lives are being you know, massively affected and it can all be avoided. This is why I'm doing what I'm doing because I want you to avoid this from happening to your children. That's where I'm coming from. So at the way I see it, there are seven big problems that, that uh, occur from being online, my kids being online. I'm going to go through them now. So here's the first one. We can probably tell what, what this is. We look at some of these messages and, you know, kids have always been nasty to each other. That's not new. Uh, we know that kids can be uh, pretty mean to each other. But the problem is that now they have an avenue to be so much more mean than they ever were before. And for whatever reason, when, when kids or people, not just kids even, but, but when kids are behind a screen, for some reason, they uh, feel that they can be a lot more nasty than they would ever be to anyone's face. And so kids are copying awful messages uh, that are having major effect, major, major effect on them that they shouldn't have to go through. So of course this is cyberbullying. Around 50 to 80% of school children are involved in cyberbullying and most regularly. So that doesn't mean they're all being bullied. When I say they're involved, that means that they may be, uh, be a cyber bully. They may be a victim of cyberbullying. They may be the, the one who's being bullied or the one who's instigating it. Or they may be a bystander, and bystanders of cyberbullying are, are, can be massively affected by it as well. So that's an awful lot of children. That means that if you have two children, then there's a very, very good chance that one of them at least is going to be involved in cyberbullying. Three Australians, in Australia here, three Australians commit suicide each week as a result of cyberbullying. The figure in the US is, is just terrifying. It's around 4,500 uh, kids a day month uh, committing suicide. That works out to, I think it's 86 or so students a week committing suicide. It's a shocking stat. Obviously one child is, is too much, um, but three each week, you know, 86 a week in the US, it's, it's insane. Something has to be done. The vast majority of victims don't tell their parents. And this is why cyberbullying tends to get so bad. And for there's plenty of reasons for that, but because a lot of the victims don't tell their parents, don't want to upset them, or for whatever reason they don't tell their parents, um, that makes it very hard for you to help them through it. And so it gets worse and worse. And, and then eventually a lot of kids just don't see any other way out. Problem number two is social media. Of course, the thing that we're so scared of. Um, more than 50% of kids aged 10 are using social media. Kids are on it younger than, than we think. And the problem here is that often, I mean, you may have done this, uh, or I certainly know a lot of parents, when the kids ask them if they can get onto social media, a lot of us say, well, no, honey, you're too young when you're a bit older, sure, but not just yet. Now, you're probably right if, if your child is, you know, 9 or 10 or 11 or 12, maybe they are too young. But here's the problem with that. If they really, really want to get on social media, and let's say, you know, if, if their friends are on it and they have what they call FOMO, fear of missing out, then the pressure for them to be on social media is going to be stronger than them wanting to abide by your wishes and you know to keep you happy so what are they going to do inevitably what do they do most kids and it's not that they're being naughty or the, the intention is not to be naughty but what they will do is they'll get on social media and they'll do it behind your back and they're smart enough and savvy enough to do it in a way that you'll have no idea that they're even on there now because they're on there at that age they're going to do something silly the chances of them making a mistake or saying something silly uh, are very very high but they then can't come to you for help because they know they're going to be in trouble because they know that you don't want them on there in the first place. So they're assuming that if they do come to you for help, what the first thing you're going to say is, well, I told you not to be there. What were you doing there? So they won't come to you for help. So now they're on these platforms. They're too young to understand what they're doing, the implications of what they're doing. 
and they can't come to you for help. This is a problem. Now, one in five children override social media settings. It's very, very easy to override the settings. Our kids are very tech savvy, you know, by the age of eight, nine, ten, certainly. Now, this is an, a, a, not a new stat, really old stat. Seven and a half million Facebook users are underage. And Facebook, to be honest, isn't overly relevant these days because, of course, most kids aren't on Facebook because that's where we are. <laughs> We're on Facebook. Parents are on Facebook. The kids are not there. The kids are on Snapchat or they're on Kick Messenger or they're on Instagram or they're on, you know, different things all the time, basically wherever you're not. Uh, so, but with all of these applications or, or um, instant messaging services or platforms, whatever they are, uh, they all do have the minimum age requirements. Most of them are 13, if not more. And most kids just completely ignore that. It's very easy to override those settings. So it doesn't matter what they're on. They're probably going to be on there and they, they're probably younger than they're supposed to be. Um, but they don't really care about that. They're probably going to be there anyway. 43% of kids age 12 and up message strangers online. So the kids that do it know that they're not supposed to do it. Their parents have told them. Most parents, the vast majority of parents do tell the kids don't talk to strangers online, uh, but they're doing it anyway. Problem number three uh, is privacy. So privacy, oh, privacy online is a huge thing. Sorry, just need a water break. Uh, kids are perceived to be the weakest link in your privacy online. So whether they are or not, they're perceived to be. And that's what counts. So there are a lot of hackers that will try to get access to PCs or devices that your children are using to get the information out of that device so that they can then uh, ruin your life effectively. So that they can then um, you know, pretend to be you, take over your identity, they can uh, steal your money, they can send you bankrupt in a day and unfortunately it's not really that hard to do if they want to do it. So <clears throat> there are 77,000 gaming accounts that are hacked each month online. So that means that if your children are playing games online, uh, there's a good chance that they can be hacked. It's really not that difficult to do. You need to be aware of that and aware of how to, to uh, stop it or make it much less likely to happen. Identity theft and fraud are rampant, particularly so if you are Australian or if you're in the US, um, you're perceived to be wealthier, relatively speaking, than people in other countries. So whether you feel wealthy or not, uh, relatively speaking, you probably are, particularly if you're in Australia. And so that makes you a target for identity theft and certainly it makes you a target for fraud online. Problem number four is internet predators, of course. Uh, just scary things. We want to keep our children safe, of course. All of us want to keep our children safe and the most important thing in our world. So we want to do whatever it takes, but we don't know how, and it's not simple. Okay, so we're scared that something bad is going to happen to our kids, and we see, we read stories of things that have happened to other kids, and we obviously don't want that to happen to our own. Problem number five is peer pressure. Now, peer pressure in itself, of course, is nothing new. Peer pressure has always been in existence. It's a very, very strong, powerful thing. Peer pressure these days, we don't know how to deal with the peer pressure of our kids wanting to use social media and being on us to use that social media. Also, you know, a lot of kids, a lot of, a lot of parents that I speak to certainly are, are driven crazy by their kids, always wanting to play the latest and greatest games. You know, what are these games anyway? Always wanting to play the latest and greatest um, and always wanting the latest in technology devices. Uh, so if that's driving you crazy, then you're not alone. <laughs> Um, these sorts of comments, now all my friends play Minecraft, why can't I? Interestingly, my son actually had asked me to play Minecraft before he got into Pokemon. And I'd said no to that, not, not because I was against Minecraft so much in itself, but just because I knew how addictive Minecraft was. Uh, so because I said no to Minecraft, of course he went and got himself into Pokemon. And in hindsight, I think I probably would have preferred Minecraft. Um, you know, these comments, all my friends have a DS, all my friends have an iPhone, you know, your kids are going to be wanting a phone probably well before you want to be giving them one. Problem number six is overwhelm. Okay, so with the ever increasing rate of technology changing, it happens so, so quickly. How on earth can we keep up? Our kids are smarter than us when it comes to this stuff. Okay, they're more tech savvy than we are. So we may not want to admit it. I don't like to admit it to my either of my children. Um, but they're pretty savvy, you know, we've all, we've all got stories and our kids, you know, they can grab our phones and they can swipe things and we, we look and go, oh, hey, what, what are you doing? What are you doing? Um, and they're like, it's okay, I'm just, I'm just tidying up your phone and swiping here and there and everywhere. Um, our kids are really smart and that's a scary thing. 
and then particularly you know to be outsmarted by them at, at such a young age. So here's a reason why perhaps you might be feeling a bit overwhelmed. Now these figures are old already, they're already from July 2013 so they're not new um, but back then all, all these figures will be high now, back then in just one minute in 60 seconds online uh, there's you know over well over 500 websites so that's over a thousand websites every two minutes online you know masses of tweets, tweets would have gone up Interestingly, at that point, back in 2013, middle of 2013, there were 72 hours of video uploaded to YouTube. Just two years later, down the bottom here, you'll see as of July 2015, we've got more than 400 hours in YouTube. Okay, now it's probably close to 500 hours every minute being uploaded in YouTube. It's absolutely insane. Um, you know, lots and lots of new blog articles being posted. The, the Instagram has Instagram and Snapchat figures will be much much higher these days. So back then, two hundred sixteen thousand photos on Instagram, one hundred four thousand photos in Snapchat. You know, Snapchat if that hasn't doubled, I'd be stunned by now or more. So there's an awful lot of stuff happening online. Of course, it's overwhelming. Problem number seven is monitoring our kids. Most of us want to monitor our kids. We kind of want to know what our kids are doing, but we don't know how to do it. We don't know whether to do it, how much to do it. So here's the thing, what are our kids doing? Do we need to monitor their usage? If we do, then how much do we need to monitor it? And how do we do it without being creepy? So we don't want to spy on our kids as such, or we certainly don't want to feel like we're spying on our kids, but at the same time, we kind of do want to know what we're doing. And we want to do it in a way that will actually strengthen our relationship with them, uh, not in a way that will build up, that will you know build a wall or barrier between us and them. So pretty tricky problems that we have to deal with. <laughs> now here are three common mistakes. The first uh, common mistakes that parents are making that I don't want you to make. So the first mistake is waiting until the ship has sailed. It's waiting too long to learn what you need to learn and get on top of this so that you can keep your children safe online. So if you're sort of thinking, you know, I'm, I'm a little bit concerned about what my kids are doing now, but I'm much more concerned about what will happen when they get to high school or when they're 13, when they're in their teens. And certainly, of course, things happen, you know, to their kids, to kids online when they're in their teens. But it doesn't start then. It starts much younger for most kids. So if you're extremely lucky, if you're extremely lucky and your children, your, you know, nothing bad happens to your child online and they don't see any anything inappropriate online until they're, you know, until they are in their teens, then, you know, fantastic for you um, and if it happens then at the time that it happens you're going to need to know how to handle it and so there's no point waiting until it happens and then learning what to do you need to learn what to do now so that when it happens then you've got it under control then you can deal with it you can help your child and you're not sort of stuck on the spot floundering it and caught on the back foot now the thing too is that you don't know when something is going to happen so you want to learn what to do before it happens but you don't know when it's going to happen See, for some kids, some kids are getting into massive trouble online when they're eight, eight years old, okay? Some are nine, some are ten. Ten-year-olds are seeing porn. You know, young kids, they're savvy enough. They're posting information online. They're doing things behind your back because they can. They know how to. Um, and so you don't know when this is going to happen. So the sooner you learn, and the time to learn is really yesterday, <laughs> the sooner you learn and get on top of the stuff, um, the more you're going to be able to avoid. And the whole idea is to guide your children safely from the start. It's not to wait until there's a problem and then to deal with it. It's, you know, prevention is better than a cure. This is all about preventing things happening online. This is why I actually don't uh, don't talk to people so much or don't sort of address this to parents who have kids in their teens or in high school. This is really about you if your kids are in primary school or if they're between the ages of 5 and 12 because that's when I believe you really need to get on top of this. Mistake number two, if you're thinking it won't happen to me, then you're also not alone. That's a very, very common thought process, of course. And it's a natural thing. Oh, it won't happen to me. My, my kids are okay. My kids are pretty responsible. You know, and it's not that your kids, I'm not suggesting your kids aren't responsible. Of course, you know your kids a lot better than I do. Uh, but it's not a matter of being responsible. It's, it's The fact is that this is happening to all of us. This is happening. It's, it's an online thing. So by its nature, this is not something that you need to be concerned about if you live in a, you know, not so socio-high economic sort of area. Um, this is all over the place. A, a site, there's, there's been a site that has become known about uh, recently here in Australia where images of, of girls, high school girls, uh, have been posted online and you know they're on a site, Lots, of, plenty of people are looking at these girls. They're, some of them are in school uniform, some of them are not wearing much or anything at all. 
uh, and they're you know in certainly compromising positions in that site. Now this isn't the only site of its kind. There's plenty of them out there. This is just the one that became known uh, and has sh shocked people here lately. But the thing is that the schools that are involved in this site, I mean, there's a school five minutes away from where I live. Uh, there was a, there's a lot of schools uh, listed on this site and some of those schools are considered pretty good schools. Okay, so this is happening to everyone. This is this good kids. It's not that the kids are uh, bad kids as such. Okay, so this whole the, the belief that it won't happen to me is really, really not safe. It's not going to keep your children safe at all. You, you, what you want to do is presume that it will happen and if it doesn't happen, fantastic, then you just got lucky. Mistake number three that most parents are making is they're falling short of helping keep the kids safe online. They're thinking that a simple statement is enough. They're thinking that just saying to kids, you know, don't talk to strangers online or don't post images online is enough to stop them from actually doing those things. Uh, and it's not enough. Okay, so the kids that are told not to talk to strangers online are talking to strangers online. Kids that are told don't post these images of yourself online are posting these images of themselves online because it's not enough. Okay, it's falling short of what we need to do. This is not a simple thing. Okay, and a simple you know, statement or one conversation is really not enough to keep your children safe online. So it's just not knowing what it, what it takes and not acquiring the knowledge to, to learn what it takes to keep your children safe is, is a really big mistake to make. That puts your children in danger, in real, real danger. So by this point, hopefully, you're kind of keen to know what the solution to this is. And there is a solution to this that I can help you with. So here is a solution that can help you keep your children safe and balanced and healthy online. Now, it's a three-step system. This is a complex problem, okay? If it wasn't a complex problem, then it wouldn't be the problem that it is. We wouldn't have so many people getting themselves in trouble online. So it's a complex problem problem um, and it is a fairly complex solution but what I've tried to do is simplify what I have done is simplify the solution make it as simple as possible and I've broken it down into three basic steps uh, and those steps are to communicate learn and collaborate uh, so each of these steps are really really important of course they wouldn't be there if they didn't need to be there no two steps will work on their own without the third one so all three, communicate, learn and collaborate, all three steps need to be covered to, uh, to keep your children safe online. And remember that the whole the point of this uh, system that we've come up with is to get these, transformation, get these transformations for you. So this is, this is so that you can go from that fear of what your kids do online to have the peace of mind that they can guide themselves safely. It's about taking you from overwhelmed to being in control. It's about losing your children to technology to gaining a much stronger personal connection. So if they're the sorts of, this is the place where you want to end up, then this is what you want to be uh, learning some more about. And I'm going to talk about that now, what it actually involves. So step one, we said, uh, is to communicate more effectively. So what do I mean by that? And I'm going to tell you a story to illustrate this. This is a true story. So uh, once upon a time, there's a 12, uh, there was a mum uh, with a 12 year old son. I don't use their real names for their own uh, protection. So we call the mum Sharon and we call the son David. So uh, one day David goes to school. He's 12 years old, so he's in year six at school. He goes to school and uh, he's got some friends in school. One of his friends has a mobile phone or a cell phone, a few in the States. He has his phone and on that phone he has internet access and he's found himself uh, some porn online. This is pretty easy to find. So he calls, so this friend calls David and some other, other friends all over. He says, hey, Dave, you know, come check this out and shows him this video online. Now, David really isn't interested. He really doesn't particularly want to be watching this, but he's been called over. And if he was to walk away, then his friends would, would say what? You know, his friends are going to sort of go, yeah, oh, what, what, what's your problem? You know, what's wrong with you? So he feels like he sort of has to kind of just stay there and watch. So he does watch this video. Uh, at the end of it, his, his friend that had the phone said to him, hey, Dave, you know, if you ever want to check this out later on, um, here's the address. So he puts the domain name or the URL, the address of that site in Dave's pocket. So Dave just, you know, goes off and doesn't think any more about it and, or he doesn't, he certainly has no intention of actually looking up this site, um, but it's there in his pocket. So he gets home from school that day and, and there's his mum, Sharon, how's your day, Dave? Yeah, good, everything's fine. Uh, and time to do put a wash on. So Sharon grabs, you know, 
David takes off his jacket, she empties his pockets, and to put the jacket in the wash, and of course she finds this website. So she does what any normal mum does and, and has a bit of a freak out. <laughs> and goes, oh my gosh, oh my god, oh my god, what am I gonna do? Uh, you know, what is this thing? So she tries to sort of settle herself down, you know, takes a few deep breaths, and, and when she thinks she's calm enough, she strolls on up to David and says, hey David, you know, I found this in your pocket, what's this? And shows him their, their website address. And pretty much in no time, David is just a blubbering heap and it just completely falls apart. So David is, you know, he's reduced to, you know, oh, I didn't know what it was and I didn't want to watch it and, and I, you know, I, but I, I couldn't walk away and I, I, you know, and I feel horrible and it was, I feel dirty and I didn't want to, you know, I didn't know what to, what to do and blah, blah, blah. Anyway, so he's now fallen in a crumbling heap and he's, he's you know, bawling his eyes out uh, in front of his mum. So at this point, Here's the question, what would you do? Because his mum now is on the spot. So whereas she would have loved to have said, hang on David, just stop there for a second. I'll just go and research and find out what I, how, to, how I can help you. And you know, just hold on and I'll come back in a few hours. Of course, that isn't how it works, right? You are going to know how to respond then and there. And the thing is that her response at that point is either going to be a really good one that's going to enhance the relationship and make it more likely that Dave's going to share things with her in future or it's going to have the opposite effect. So she needs to know how to respond. And she needs to know how to respond then and there. Now, the unusual thing about this situation is not that he was shown porn, not that David saw porn online. That's pretty common. What was unusual is that his mum found out about it. Um, that was the unusual thing. So that she actually did have an opportunity to respond, and hopefully she responded okay, uh, you know, in a good way. Um, so. Normally what's going to happen is that your kids are going to see this and you're just not going to know about it because, you know, your kids are not going to come running home and say, hey, mum, hey, dad, guess what I saw today? <laughs> that ain't going to happen. So uh, so you're just not going to know when it happens. So did you know that around 90% of children won't tell their parents if they've seen something online they shouldn't see or if, they've, you know, if they're in a bit of trouble online? That, that 90% does vary a little bit. It depends where, what stats you look at, but it's around about... It's a pretty high figure. It's the vast majority of children won't tell their parents. So the idea, of course, is that is to make it so that your children are one of those 10% who actually do tell you what's going on. Because, of course, if you know what's going on, then you've got much more of a chance in, in being able to deal with it. So the three pillars of communication, what we, what we cover in the communication part of the uh, solution here, the Peaceful Digital Parenting Solution, is step one is to be clear. You have to be very clear around the rules around technology, what those rules are, what they need to be, um, and establishing the lines of communication. So you may think that you have fairly open lines of communication, but I'm talking about opening those even further. It's about education. So it's about going from that dictation style, you know, whether if, if you find yourself dictating to your children all the time, um, like I was in, in the story that I, I told you about earlier, it's about going from that to a more educational style. Of communication with our kids which you'll find you'll like yourself a lot more that way um, your kids will probably like you more that way and about uh, teaching kids to be how to be accountable and responsible online and we teach you how to be prepared for those situations like in that story I just said how to be ready when you find out that something's happened so that you can deal with it in the most appropriate positive way and also uh, in helping you communicate risks appropriately of being online to your children with your children so communication is a massively important part of this process. Uh, within this solution, Peaceful Digital Parenting Solution, step two is to learn. To learn what it is that you need to know. So I'm going to tell you another story here now to illustrate this uh, true story again. Once upon a time, there were three eight-year-old girls who were best of friends, normal eight-year-old girls, you know, giggly, silly, laughing together and playing together and whatever eight-year-old girls do together. Uh, they had a play day at one of their homes. Um, so they were in this girl's bedroom and she had a device in that room and she that device had internet access on it uh, which wasn't uh, gather had no sort of controls on it um, so she also found uh, porn or the three of them found a video of some porn online and they thought it looked kind of interesting they weren't totally sure what it was but they thought it kind of looked like fun in fact and that it might be even more fun for them to create their own video so they did just that. They stripped off their clothes. They copied what they'd seen in the video they'd seen. Uh, and they created their own video. They recorded themselves doing the thing. And then they posted it online. 
as you do when you're an eight-year-old girl. So how would you feel is the question. What if this was your daughter? Because I can tell you that the parents of those eight-year-old girls didn't think that's what their kids were doing. They had no idea and they were, you know, obviously shocked and, you know, horrified of what their kids had been doing. You know, the girls, again, they weren't trying to be naughty, but they're savvy enough. They're savvy enough to create these videos and to post them online. And like eight years old, that's year three at school. Like you're in Australia, that means you're in stage two at school, yeah, year three. Uh, so that's pretty scary. Um, and the next question is, you know, what if you could have avoided this from happening? And I believe that you can avoid that from happening. Um, and that's the key. Here are some scary stats that you need to understand that you need to be aware of. So 90% of children, the vast majority of children aged 8 to 16 have viewed porn online while they're doing their homework. Now this isn't because they're actively going out looking for it. Well, they may be after the first few times, but certainly the first few times they're not looking for it. It's just because it's there. It's just because it's so easy to find it. It's everywhere and they just stumble across it. And it may be, I mean, you would have done, surely you would have done some innocent searches. I heard a story the other day, someone searched pink and some very interesting things came up in the search results. So an innocent search can be, you know, a click away or two clicks away of, of something that is really not so innocent. 60% of teens, so three-fifths of teens, uh, have created accounts for apps or social media sites without their parents' knowledge. So kids are going to do this behind your back. <laughs> Nobody thinks they're doing it behind their back. When you look at stats, you know, parents are interviewed and how many parents think that their kids are online or on this site and then you interview those same kids, how many of you are actually on this site. Um, there's always massive variation, okay? We just don't know. We just don't know what, you, what your kids are doing. They're very, very smart about it. They can cover their tracks. They can be in these places where you don't know they are and you don't particularly want them to be. 16% of students seriously consider suicide as a result of cyberbullying. That's a huge percentage, 16%. You know, 8% attempted. Generally, the stats say that 1 in 10 who attempted actually get it right, unfortunately. Now, if you've got 16% seriously considering suicide, there's an awful lot more of that that are, you know, depressed that are not actually considering suicide necessarily, but their lives are being, you know, massively um, negatively impacted by cyberbullying. So it's a really big problem. It's, you know, it's something that we need to do something about. So what is it that you need to learn? Now, by this point, you sort of may be going, oh, you know, it's, it's all too much. It's, you know, how much is, do I need to learn? How, don't, you know, don't have time and don't know everything. How am I supposed to learn it? So here's the answer is that you need to learn enough to guide your children in their online world. You don't need to be as tech savvy as your kids. And in fact, trying to beat them as far as tech savviness goes probably won't work. And it's not necessary. But you do need to learn enough to guide them to be safe online. And I mean, as a parent, you can only do the best you can with the knowledge you have, all of us, right? We do the best we can with what we know. So it makes sense that if we know, the more we know, the better job we can do, the safer our children can be. So, and here's the question, when we talk about how much do we need to know, you know, do you already know enough? Here's the thing, you would know a little bit about this topic, okay? So you probably know about a sixth of what you need to know to keep your children safe online, okay? Now, there's another two sixths that uh, you know you need to know that you don't know yet, okay, that you know you need to learn. And you can source that information online. If you've got enough time to sort through it all, you may find that other two sixths. But here's the thing. Half of the information that you need to know is that what you don't know. You don't know what you don't know, okay? So, and this is with any topic, and it certainly applies to this topic. You just don't know what you don't know. There is so much information out there and if you miss a little bit of this stuff that you don't know you don't know, then that may be the piece that you really needed to keep a child safe. Okay, hopefully that makes sense. So the eight pillars that we cover in the steps to learn are what is the ideal use of technology? Uh, how do we manage screen time? What age do we allow what games and devices? What age is okay? Um, how do we block content uh, or block sites content that we don't want our kids from seeing that is inappropriate? Not just porn, of course, also violence, uh, other things online. Uh, monitoring online activity, how do we do that effectively? Uh, how do we help our children with social media usage? Certainly they need help with that. Um, protection of privacy online, very, very important. And knowing the signs, recognising the signs of cyberbullying is key to recognise it straight away so that we can do something about it and nip it in the bud. 
So there's a lot there in that, that step two of the peaceful digital parenting solution. So we've gone through step one is communicate, step two is to learn. Step three now is to collaborate. So this is where we collaborate with our children to really conquer the problem and get on top of it. So what happens when you collaborate? Okay, you cannot win this in isolation. This is not about you, this is about your children. So you can know as much as you want, but if you don't collaborate and go and you know, share all the information that you need to in an effective way with your children, then it's not gonna work. Okay, so getting this right, getting this step right, means that you will feel relaxed. So your children are online, you know, can be here, you can all be sitting down, you can be on your phones or your devices or whatever, and you're not worried, okay? Because even though, as I said, maybe a stranger will approach your child online, maybe they will see something um, that isn't really overly appropriate for them, you know that they'll know what to do, okay? It's not gonna, it's not gonna blow up, they'll come to you, they'll be honest with you, if they need help and they will know how to deal with it. So that's what this is all about. What happens if you don't collaborate? It really is. These days it really is sticking your head in the sand. Okay, the time to do this is just is well and truly past. Okay, get it wrong, you, you live with, with fear of what your children may still be seeing and doing alone. And with guilt, if something does go wrong, okay, you just don't want to live with. So the strategies that we cover in this uh, final part in collaborating. We talk about a peaceful removal strategy. So this is what uh, I did uh, with my son and share my actual experience with you and, and what I did in detail um, to get his situation under control, which is kind of like an internet addiction detox program so that uh, your children can have a healthy balance strategy. They, they will be playing online, but they can play online, they can be offline uh, and all in moderation. Uh, non talk about how to, how to monitor what your kids are doing without being creepy, without sort of spying on them as such. Um, tips for when you're not there. Often when your kids get in trouble, it will happen when you're not there. So maybe they're at school, maybe they're at a friend's house or grandparent's place. Um, this is when things tend to happen. Peer pressure tactics, how to deal with that peer, peer pressure is such a strong force. Uh, actionable steps for cyberbullying, what are you actually going to do about it? Mastery face-to-face -face social skills. You know, a lot of us are concerned with good reason that our children are going to be walking around with their heads buried in the phone and the devices and, and forget how to actually talk to people face-to-face. -face. This is obviously an important skill that we need to have, even in the future. It doesn't matter how big technology is, social skills are an important skill, face-to-face -face social skills. Where to find quality educational games. There's some fantastic educational games out there. There are also some not-so-good not so good games out there, so where to find the good ones. Keeping up with technology, we know how difficult that is. Protecting kids from online predators, obviously hugely important. And we have actually a whole uh, a whole training session on, on that, on predator proofing your kids so that they don't have to worry about, or you don't have to worry about them uh, with predators. And protection from fraud and identity theft, we talked about earlier as well. So there's an awful lot in this. Um, the question is, what, what have you learned so far? And, and the aim up to this point is just to increase your level of awareness so it's really important that you have that level of awareness. You understand what's going on a little bit more uh, with the online world and what, what our kids are actually getting up to. So let's now take a look at how you can actually how you can take some positive action to keep your children safe online. So here's how it works, and let's just change that. So it's a CLC solution, um, as in the three steps there. It's really, what I call it now, the peaceful digital parenting solution. So how it works. You get comprehensive online training, so you can learn what you need to do, what you need to learn from home in your pajamas, in your whatever time you have. Every step step is covered in full. So all those steps I talked about within those communication, learn, uh, collaborate, it's all covered there. I talk in plain English, so I talk the way I'm talking now. Okay, what what you see or what you hear now is what you get. Uh, it's it's not fluffy. There's no hype. Uh, I just tell you what you need to know. There are templates and exercises. So the idea is to actually implement. So the templates and exercises are included as well as the uh, this training is designed to help you implement what you learn as you go so that it makes a difference um, and it makes it much easier for you as well. This is about reducing your pain. I don't want you to go through the same pain I went through. If you're already in pain, is to get you out of it pretty quickly. And of course, there are far more painful situations than I went through. I think internet addic addiction, I know from experience, is painful. Um, but, you know, next to cyberbullying, it's probably not as bad. You know, there's plenty of awful situations out there. So it's to reduce the pain and to save you time. This is a real key, is to get you the information you need in the minimal amount of time. Because I've already spent all the time collating it. I've spent an awful lot longer than you will in, in digesting it. 
and it's about getting results. Okay, this is about keeping your children safe and healthy and balanced online. So what's included? You get 10 online training sessions. They're approximately an hour each. Uh, so they go run over 10 weeks. You get one session a week over 10 weeks. They cover all the topics, as I said, discussed to reach those transformation endpoints to give you that peace of mind and the extra knowledge that you need um, and to gain a better, stronger relationship with your children. You get recordings of each session. So they are recordings that you can listen to again and again. And that's really, really important because you know, when you listen to something once, as you've listened to this, you'll only probably retain maybe 20% of what I'm saying right now. because That's the way our, our brains work because we just don't, um, we just don't remember 100% of what we hear. So you can listen to those sessions as many times as you want um, and you'll get more out of it each time you listen to them. You'll, you'll pick up on different things that are more relevant to you also at the time. As I said, there's practical exercises and templates uh, for easy implementation. Okay, so this is not something that you just sit and listen to and go, oh, yeah, that all sounds nice. Um, this is something that you'll actually act upon. Um, and I've, I've given you easy ways to act upon the information so that it will make that difference that you're looking for. There are links to valuable resources. So I found the most valuable um, of resources that I could find online and I just provide them to you. So pr pretty much what I'm doing is I'm giving it, I'm collating everything that I found online, all the best bits, and I'm pretty much handing it to you on a silver platter. The last thing that's really, really important here is that there's Facebook group community support. Now, why this is so important, this Facebook group is, is actually not a free group. It's not an open group. It's a closed group and it is a paid group. And what that means is that the quality of people that you get on that group is much higher than you might find on, say, a forum or a free, free, um, yeah, free sort of a forum or a page, a group. Often what I find on those groups, inevitably, when people are struggling with, with you know, the issues that we're talking about, the kids being online, you always get people on there who are critical of parents, who you know, accuse them of being lazy, uh, who have comments that are really not constructive and not helpful. That sort of stuff is just not, it's just not welcome. It's not a part of this group. So the point of the Facebook group is that we're all here to help each other. It's because there's other parents on it. I mean, I, I you know, happily, happily share with you all my experience and, and my knowledge that I've gained on this topic. But my experience is from, from one family. This is about we all share our experiences. So other people share their experiences so that we can all learn from each other without being critical. We can all help each other. Uh, and other people will be going through an experience similar to you. So we're all going through this. Right? There's no point in all of us going through what we're going through, the challenges that we're facing with the online world. There's no need to go through it alone. The other cool thing with a group is that if you're having a challenge and you don't want people to know particularly that you're having that challenge, you can always just PM that challenge to me um, and I'll share it as like, you know, someone in the group is, is, help, is having this challenge, here it is, and let's all, let's all help them out. Okay, so you've got an avenue now where you can get help to your, to, um, for whatever you're going through from people who care. And you can also offer the help, you know, you can, you can share what you've learned um, to help other people. So it's a really, really powerful group. It's a pretty cool thing. So what is this really about? Well, let me tell you, it's not about me, it's not really about you, and it's not even just about your children. Let me tell you a quick story. Uh, when I was in uh, year two, I think, at school, uh, there was a boy in year five at school. Uh, his family was in a car accident. It was an awful car accident, and it was a fatal one, and the year five boy uh, didn't make it. He passed away in that accident. Um, and it was really awful at the time. Now. Interesting to know, I didn't even know this boy. If I if I had met him, I, I didn't recognize him. I didn't know what he looked like. But this has had a massive effect on my life. Now, when it happened, it was just an absolute tragedy. It was awful, awful. Um, and, you know, the school was devastated. Of course, this doesn't just affect the student. It affects, it affects him, of course. Um, it affects his family hugely. It affects his friends. It affects his school. It affects the whole community. There's massive people affected. Now, this was just a tragic car accident that happened. If you imagine when this happens, when it's a suicide because of cyberbullying, how much more is that going to affect other people? How much more is that going to affect the people who are in a school who didn't do anything about it, who didn't stick up for that person, who may have known what they were going through and, you know, didn't do what it took, didn't do anything to save them? It's going to have a massive effect on your children, even if your children are not directly involved. Um, this is really going to affect them. So this is about giving your children the skills they need to protect themselves, but also their friends and other people that they know, you know, their peers online. And ultimately it's about saving lives. This is how, it doesn't get more serious than this. So what's it worth is the next question. 
as I said, there's a whole session uh, we, we cover on predator proofing your children, so you don't have to worry about predators uh, anymore. We cover, we talk about porn proofing your children, so you don't have to worry about that. You know, we have uh, children who are, you know, as young as 12, 10 even, 11, 12, um, who are sexually abusing kids as young as six, seven, eight. Um, shocking things are happening because they've been watching porn. These older kids have been watching porn. They've been watching it for a while. They think it's normal behavior and they think it's okay to carry that out on younger children. Okay, what's it worth to make sure that your child, not not just boys uh, with porn, can be girls as well, but that your child is not involved in that? What's it worth uh, for your children to know that your children are responsible digital citizens? You know, a good positive social profile online. To know they're going to be free from cyber bullying, obviously it's huge to have this carefree sort of lifestyle. To know that your, your privacy is increased online, you're less likely to get hacked into. Uh, to know how to effectively monitor what your kids are doing and know that they're okay. To help your kids, what's it worth for them to have social skills? That will carry them through life, of course. It's very, very important. Uh, to be addiction free, to not have to worry about internet addiction, such a common problem. Um, and it really is tearing families apart. So what's it worth? To know that that's not going to tear your family apart. And that's not just also affecting parents and children. That's also siblings with each other. It's a massive, massive effect. Uh, to have strong relationships with your children. We don't have children so that they'll lock themselves in a room and that we won't, you know, we won't see them or that we won't be able to get through and relate to them well. It's not, not the reason we have kids. And ultimately, again, what's it worth to have that peace of mind? That your kids are okay. That, you, you know, you can run along on the beach like this. You can be with your family, you can have this time and you don't have to worry. You know that they can get the, be the benefits of technology without suffering from all those pitfalls. So what is it worth? Very good question. I value it, I think very, very reasonably, in fact, at $1,997. I think it's actually worth a lot more than that. But I'm valuing it at $1,997. Um, but for you, it's available for $997. So way, way less than what it's really worth. Um, but I want to make this accessible for you, okay? I don't want this to be something that's only available for the, you know, hugely wealthy. This is something that, um, you know, should be available to a lot of people that I know will make a massive, massive difference in helping keep your children safe online. So $997 is all it is as a one-off payment. Um, if it's easier for you, though, uh, then you have a choice as well. There is a payment plan available. You can pay $397 up front and then pay another $3.97 the next month and, and then another month later. So you can make three payments of $3.97. You do pay a little bit extra that way, um, but if that's easier in your cash flow, then that is an option as well. Now there's bonus or a few bonuses to this as well. Not only do you get uh, to keep the recordings of all the training sessions, but you'll also get recordings of all updated training sessions. So because this is a topic that's obviously changing all the time, I will be recording new sessions from time to time as they become relevant or as if, you know, the information there, if it becomes outdated. And you'll receive recordings of those sessions at no extra cost. So you pay for it once, you don't have to keep paying for it. Once you've paid, you've paid and that's it. Um, you get live monthly Q&A or information sessions. And these are really valuable too. This is so that while you're doing the, the whole piece of digital parenting solution, the 10 weeks of training, you can also, on, on, on the, the Q&A sessions, you can ask, of course, whatever questions you have and get them answered comprehensively in those sessions. Um, and we also cover information that's uh, up to date at that point in time. So things that have happened in the last month, maybe new new apps or new uh, sites that have come out that your, parent, that your kids may be wanting to go on, whether they're you know, a good idea or a bad idea or just a review of them so that you can make a decision on whether you really want your kids to be there. So there's really useful information there. So that's once a month. You get access to that as well during your training. And you also get access to a monthly newsletter. So in that newsletter, we highlight you know, some general sort of safety tips. We share stories. Uh, so we share stories from, stories from other parents, what they've gone through and what they've learned so that you can learn from what other people are going through. So when, again, that situation um, is relevant for you, then you will be in a better position to deal with it. Um, that also covers new, new um, whatever, whatever's happened, basically, in the last month, new um, apps and sites and, and uh, social media platforms and we review in information that you need to know about again um, relevant to that last month. So this is all about keeping you up to date. Now the objections that I hear why people if you think you know may not want to um, do this whole peaceful digital parenting solution at 10 weeks of training. So objection one is you know do I really have to know all that? Seriously is it a little bit of overkill? 
And I have to say, you know, I showed you the diagram before with the one six, the knowledge that you, you know, the two six you, you don't know, and the three six that you don't know, you don't know. And so my answer to that is that basically, yeah, you kind of do need to know all that, okay? And and where I said one of the mistakes was that people fall fall short. You know, we, we tell our kids what we need them to do, but it's not it, we don't do it in an effective way because we just don't know how to and you do need to know how to if you want your children to be safe online then this is what it takes um i don't have time of course we're all struggling for time time flies i love this love this little picture time does fly for all of us you know 24 hours in a day and there never seems to be enough um this is the reason that i've done this the reason that i've collated the information is because i've given you what you need to know in the least possible amount of time so i'm i'm saving you the time you know, we've said, yes, you really need to need to know that information. So here's a way to get that information in the minimum amount of time so that you can get all of the knowledge that you need um, and take the least possible amount of time in getting that knowledge. Can't afford it. Um, I understand uh, some of us, you know, we're not all loaded and I completely understand that. I think that can't afford it thing is it, it's about putting it. It's largely about priorities and putting things in perspective to an extent. So when you think about, you know, what would you spend for $997 or $397 a month, what would you otherwise spend that money on? You know, if this means that maybe you don't go out to dinner a few times or, you know, you don't buy that new piece of the new lounge and you put up with your old lounge suite for a little while longer, it's really a question of priorities and, and you know, what's it worth to keep your children safe, I guess. Um, it, it also, to put it in perspective, I actually uh, was, did a course uh, a little while ago on buying and selling websites. And that course cost me, I actually paid very painfully, but I paid $2,000 a month, uh, or 1997 I think it was also a month, for 12 months. So in total I paid $24,000 uh, to learn how to earn money online. And i got to say, $24,000 for that or two grand for just under two grand for this, uh, it's a no-brainer which one is more valuable. Okay, this is more valuable. My <laughs> End of story. Um, who are you anyway? So you may, or whether you, or you may or may not be thinking, well, hang on, who who are you to to tell me all this stuff? So let me just explain who I am. Uh, so I'm extremely passionate on this topic. I'm someone who researches this topic. Uh, I learn more and more about this all the time on a consistent basis. I'm I'm keeping up with what's going on and what you need to know and what I need to know because of course I want to keep my children safe as well. Um, I've authored a book. Uh, this is my book here. I think it should be safe online. I think again, it became a number one bestseller on Amazon. I got some great reviews on there. Uh, it's a fully researched book, and I can tell you that when you study a topic for as long as I have for years, then it's impossible not to know a lot about it um, and be able to then share that. And you, it's impossible. I don't know how I could also write a book and research a book without knowing a little bit about it, or probably a lot about it. So, I guess what I'm saying to you is that I'm someone that knows about this topic. Um, and there's a position to share the information that I learned so that it will help you to keep your kids safe and balanced online. But more effectively than telling you, um, I mean, I can tell you whatever I want, it's more effective to hear from other people what they say. So now Helen is a mother of two girls. She went through the training with me um, and she said, uh, while she was going through it, she said, I really like your style and how you have balanced it with facts and real life stories. Your voice is easy to listen to and you seem like a very normal mum looking for ways to protect her kids and willing to share what she has learnt. And, you know, that's it in a nutshell. Okay, I'm not that special. I am a normal mum. I'm a normal busy mum. Okay, I've just discovered uh, some information that I think is extremely valuable and that I want to share with as many parents as possible because I want to avoid your children and as many children as possible to falling into the, um, you know, suffering from those pitfalls of technology. Now, after Helen finished the whole training, she then said, Ruth's done the legwork to make it very easy for me to just get on with the job of being the best parent I can. It sounds cheesy, but I now have a lot more practical knowledge and step-by-step -step instructions on how to implement some common sense rules regarding my children and their safe use of technology. Even the first session gave me practical tools to bond with my kids using technology and not be alienated by it all. Okay, so it, you, you'll gain a lot out of this, this training just from after session one. So after session one, you'll, you'll realize already that, that you're gonna get your money's worth. Okay, um, it's, it's not about, you don't have to go through all 10 sessions before you actually learn something. You learn a lot each time and you just continue to build on that knowledge with each session as you go through it. Uh, another quick testimonial I want to share, and this is an interesting one because this is from a lady who, um, all I shared with her is what I shared with you at the start of this. And what, I, what that was, was uh, the step that I took with Pokemon. 
uh, with my son is how I got involved in the game and I started to learn a bit about the game itself and I showed my child that I was my son that I was willing to be a little bit more interested in his life um, so that I could start breaking down those barriers so that's pretty much what I shared with this lady um, she's Belgian so English is not her first language I have to excuse that um, she has an eight-year-old son same as I did at that point uh, and her eight-year-old son was pretty obsessed with being online also he was you know spending days not even getting out of his pajamas and not leaving his room while he was playing online so she said what Ruth has taught me and I'm definitely going to implement as this is going to save the relationship between me and my eight-year-old son is such a crucial gift that she gives to the world we as parents need to know how to speak the language that our children are learning on online games before they will listen to us and connect with us and this really really is a key now the cool thing about this is that just a couple of weeks later uh, after I shared that with with uh, Dr. V uh, she said in a Facebook message awesome you rock it's very cool to rock you haven't been told that you rock before it's very cool uh, so she says I've been having quality time and a better relationship with my children thanks to your advice she means there so that's pretty cool if you can get that sort of an outcome after you know five minutes after one insight from this program there are lots of insights there's a lot of information in 10 hours that we go through so yeah that's what you can achieve after just a, a tinsy bit um, imagine what you can achieve when you go through the whole lot uh, another I seem to be attracting doctors for some reason <laughs> Uh, but another, I guess, side effect uh, that's really cool is something that I didn't actually intend through this, but that does happen, uh, is Dr. Jerry Rosenov has said that a Ruth process isn't just something that can be used with parents and children in a family setting, but it's a philosophy that can be used broad spectrum. That ability and techniques, strategies on how to move out of my agenda and be more in present time with the person, child or people I'm with so that I can actually connect with them, I would strongly recommend that that's just a wonderful process that is useful for all of us in this busy world. Uh, which is such a good point. I'm so glad he said that because, as I said, it wasn't actually my intention. Um, but it's a wonderful side effect. And this isn't also, you know, I've had parents say to me, oh, I'm not so concerned with, with online, with people, my kids online. I'm just more, you know, having struggling in my relationship with them at the moment. And this will help you with your relationship with your children. This isn't all purely helping keep children safe online. Obviously, that is the focus of it. Um, but there are plenty more benefits. And it's not even just to help you communicate with your children. It's to help you communicate with anyone. You know, communication, the level of communication that you have with people is, that's the key to the relationships that you have with people. You know, better relationships with people is generally going to result in more happiness for you. So, uh, so yeah, lots of really cool effects. Now, I am happy to offer you a money-back guarantee as well. So if you go through the, or when you go through the training, I should say, um, the whole Peaceful Digital Parenting Solution, you'll listen to all 10 sessions, you get nothing out of it, say, you know what, this is just a load of crap, I've just wasted my time. Uh, then I will refund your money if that's the case. Pretty convinced that won't be the case though. So there is a cheaper alternative. Uh, if you're not quite ready to do the Peaceful Digital Parenting Solution for whatever reason, then here is the cheaper alternative and it's, it's a monthly membership. So the idea of the monthly membership is not so much to give the comprehensive knowledge that you need uh, to get on top of this topic completely, but it is to help you stay up to date. So this is the program that you join to stay up to date. And the ideal would be that you would do the Peaceful Digital Parenting Solution, learn everything you need to know, and then just sort of flow into this uh, to, uh, to maintain, to keep you up to date with what's going on. So the month monthly membership includes pretty much the bonus that's included while you do the Peaceful Digital Parenting Solution. So it includes that live monthly Q&A session that I was talking about. That session is, as I say, it, it is held live, but it's also recorded, so if you miss it live, uh, then that's perfectly fine. You can listen to it recorded at any time at your leisure. There's that monthly newsletter I was talking about and there's also that closed Facebook community. Now the most valuable part of this membership um, I would certainly suggest is the closed Facebook community. A lot of value that you get in that and being part of that community of supportive parents, like-minded parents, where we can all help each other get through this. So the value of the monthly membership is $97.00. Uh, that's not what I'll be what it will cost. I will be uh, charging $37. I think that is around about what it should be um, But right now uh, I'm offering it to you for just $20 a month. So it's less than $5 a week. It's seriously It's, it's, it's a cost of a cup of coffee or, or probably less than a beer if you're going out depending on where you buy the beer um, a week To keep your kids safe online. So it's it really is a bit of a no-brainer So if there are any questions 
uh, at all, then please uh, feel free to email me. The best email, you can email me at ruth at childrenandtechnology.com uh, and I'll get back to you as soon as I can to answer all of your questions. Uh, this is proven, okay? So this system is proven. It works now. So the only question then is that are you ready to take the necessary steps to protect your children online? Uh, and I'll just talk about it. I've done a lot of talking now. Uh, so if you are ready, uh, here are the next steps. Uh, it's pretty simple. You just register for the Peaceful Digital Parenting Solution at uh, here's HTT. Now, just make sure, I'm not sure if this link will actually work if you click on it, uh, but if it doesn't, HTTPS, remember the S, that just means it's a secure site. So when you put through your payment, it is secure. HTTPS dot uh, digital parenting dot com forward slash register. Uh, when you register to do the Peaceful Digital Parenting Solution, uh, you will uh, have that option there where you can choose to pay the full, whether you want to pay the $9.97 up front or the three monthly payments of $3.97. Either way, once you register, you will receive your first training session uh, pretty well straight away or within a few minutes. Um, on that session, there are instructions on what to do. There is a link there uh, to join the Facebook group, which is so important, as I mentioned. Um, so you just ask, you just make a request, uh, click there to join the group and uh, as soon as I can I will approve your request. Um, and then you're part of the group and you've got your training sessions, they'll be sent to you one each week uh, and you just get through it. And again, more instructions that you need are on your first email there. Uh, if you decide that you don't want to do the solution yet and you just want to sign up for the monthly membership then that's perfectly fine too. And you can do that at that same link, so the same place, uh, peacefuldigitalparenting.com uh, to sign up. And so that's about enough from me. Uh, I think I've talked enough. Thank you so much for listening. I hope you got a lot out of this. I really, really look forward to meeting you uh, through the Peaceful Digital Parenting Solution or through the monthly membership. Uh, that'd be really fantastic. Look forward to helping you keep your children safe, healthy and happy and balanced online. Thanks so much. Uh, I'll catch you soon.